Hi, I'm Scientific Illustrator Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Go Out and Sketch a Red Panda Instructional Video. In this video, we're showing you how to apply what you learned with your step by step lesson to draw, paint, sketch a red panda. You can follow along with this lesson even if you don't have a lesson kit. You can help this tiny business by clicking the like button, subscribing to its YouTube channel, and shopping for grades at naturesketchcreate.com. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. Go out to sketch a red panda at a zoo or from an H2 video at home. Today, I'm sketching from a composite video of a red panda for demonstrative purposes. Remember, this is just a sketch. It's meant to be relaxing and fun. So don't let yourself get too caught up with details in your accuracy. Just enjoy your time relaxing and observing nature. Let's get started. So it's a good idea before starting on this watercolor paper with your drawing of the red panda to go ahead and do a few rough sketches on some inexpensive paper just trying things out getting an idea of the panda and the shape of it and getting comfortable kind of like a warm-up so once you've done your warm-up and you feel pretty comfortable then you can start drawing your red panda so you want to start with just some simple shapes so circles, ovals, and just really light marks. And that helps you so that if you want to change anything, you can. So this is, we're just starting as a base. I'm trying to make sure we're not drawing it too big or too small. really rough marks and just think of them as simple shapes so we have circles some triangles oval kind of a weird rectangle or square another oval kind of a cylinder shape for the tail using those really light marks now this is going to need some adjusting it's not really the right size it looks like the body needs to be a little bigger this needs the feet are going to need some changing but we're gonna go ahead and start with the head because it all looks like it's gonna fit on the page. So I'm gonna start with the face and the muzzle. So I'm gonna kinda of go central on down on the face here and then I'm gonna draw the nose. And this is personal preference. I think it's just gonna help me figure out where things go. head kind of goes up from that muzzle and the nose is kind of a little smaller than this really it goes up to the face and there's an individual shape right there above the nose as well and then two shapes on the side of the nose Probably a little off. I can definitely make plenty of adjustments later. And then there's some these little shapes above the eye. Kind of like crescent shape here. And the eye itself. I'm gonna put in a rough representation of where the eye is that we can move it around a little bit. It looks like it'd be closer to the muzzle. Maybe the muzzle's not really the right size yet. And well, it goes all the way out to the end of the eye, so I'm gonna add that in. Again, just using any kind of way to break these parts up into shapes to make it easier to figure out where they're placed and the size in relation to each other. 
little circles underneath the eyes. And I'm using that to help me figure out where these white parts on the face go, these white tear areas. cheek area here. Add that in. And take some marks to help guide me here. Just adding any light marks I can to help guide me through the process. be exact this is just a sketch so don't worry too much about that and I can make some more adjustments to the face I'm gonna also go ahead and Here's just a little bit bigger, I think. I'm gonna start adding in the body and making adjustments there. So I see kind of a place where I can add a line to help guide me, creating some negative spaces. out from the head since that's where I started. Start from the body, then you can work from the body and start creating the head. So it's really a personal preference. Adding in again where this light is hitting and where the color changes in the fur creates another shape. So I'm kind of concentrating on that and how it relates to the tail here. some darker marks on top of my light marks so that I know those are what I'm going to have as my drawing. And there's a negative space here. I can look at that to help me figure out where this foot goes. I can even draw in a little arch there. Kind of an arched space and then the foot comes back down. It's kind of flat. Okay, I'm looking at the size of this to figure out how far over it needs to go, how thick it needs to be, why. I still feel like this might be a little big. I might narrow that in a little bit more. That's okay. This paw, this paw goes over to pretty much not quite the end of the head, so it looks like it's about right in comparison to the head. And to get the different sizes right, just compare the different sizes to different parts of the body in relation to each other. this tail as if it wasn't shaved to keep it fluffy. You can draw it shaved if you want. You can also note on the side I chose to draw the tail fluffy rather but it was shaved. And 
You might want to adjust the eyes just a little bit to make sure. We'll do a lot of those adjustments later. Add in whatever kind of guidelines you need. I'll look at it a few times. Make sure it looks right. It's a little off to me. Maybe I added too many shapes in. Just look back and forth, kind of like when I flip the page up and down the flip book, just look at it and the panda a few times to make sure things are in line enough. confusing me. I'm going to go ahead and erase this line here and help give me that space. Now it feels a little too narrow. So you just kind of look at it back and forth a few times. down just a little bit, just the eyes and such. So I'm going to try to encourage you not to overwork your sketches. I definitely feel like this should be a little lower. Maybe that's throwing it off. Maybe a little smaller. just a sketch so I think I'm going to leave it the way it is and move on to adding some ink and I can make more adjustments and maybe it'll come together a little bit more later on. You can add whatever you like in these white areas. This is your journal, your sketch. You can add things like the weather, how you were feeling the day, what you thought about your sketch even, maybe your um, the animal was doing, uh, anything about the anatomy of the animal, anything at all. This is your sketch in your journal, so make sure you make it your own with your own observations and ideas. Now I'm going to, for consistency, go ahead and add in the name, the common name Red Panda, and then write the scientific name and italics below. And then I'm going to go ahead and move on to adding some paint to the sketch. So I have my paints here for my step-by-step -step lesson. They're already mixed, just makes things faster and easier. But I also have my paints, my paint bottles, just in case I need to remix them or mix any new colors. And they've dried up, so I'm just going to revive them with a little bit of water. And I'm gonna follow the same steps I did with the step-by-step -step 
So I'm going to add a little bit of water to this really wet, light color of the Panda Rust. Dab it off on my towel and check it out. And I'm going to refer to both my Panda reference and maybe my colors here, my step-by-step. -step. And then I'm going to start adding that in. And again, just try to avoid those white areas. Just adding this in like I would with a marker, crayon, just filling in the space. Make sure to pick up paint whenever you need it. space as a base color for my red panda. This still feels a little too broad, too wide right up here, so I think I'm going to go ahead and keep that paint a little bit from the edge there so that I can make changes. I'm not worried about leaving marks for my watercolor or where the direction is going because I'm going to be putting a few layers in but you can worry more about that if you want. I'm just filling in the spaces and if it dries a little darker in one spot than the other that's why. little space on the face. Add a little bit more paint in there. This will dry really fast. It's a great method for sketching. So you can dab it. I wouldn't recommend running your finger over it. We can dab it to check. Because we're not adding a lot of water to the paper itself. We're adding water and making it wetter, lighter, less pigment in our palette. So, and then taking that after dabbing on our towel to our paper. So it should dry quickly. So I will move on pretty fast. If you're out sketching an animal, this helps out a lot to be able to get some water, some different layers of color onto your paper here. Next, I'm gonna add in the Panda Rust and set the deeper color and check it out to make sure it looks right, even darker so there's some more paint on the side here I can add in. Put that off my towel. And I'm just going to add that into all the dark areas and I'm going to refer to my panda reference for that. If it's too dark just dab it on your towel a little bit. Get rid of some of that paint pigment. Or you can even remix it if you need to. little bit of a gradient into the top of the head, clean off your brush a bit, and then just kind of move some of that wet paint into the rest of the head a little bit. It still has, needs to gradient a little bit more, just a little too dark there. And you can do the same on this other side, just kind of move some of that paint a little bit up to the top. some more up and add it to the body. Maybe my feet are too, my legs are too long, my feet are too wide, so I'm going to actually change that too. So I'm not going to paint all the way down. And make it a little higher. Always make changes throughout a sketch. So here's the dark area, and working with this is one space. And then I'm going to go ahead and dab off my brush, and then take that clean wet brush and move some of that paint into the rest of the body there, creating a lighter color, kind of creating a gradient. 
And then it's even lighter on the back here, so we're gonna just kind of take it into the back. And it's not quite as dark as I want it to be, but that's okay because I have another opportunity to make it dark again right here at the leg. And the paint will blend together a little bit into the wet areas. And it's naturally just running out, the pigment's naturally running out of my brush. So it's lightening in color. I'm just moving it in there, dabbing off my brush so that I kind of blend that a little bit more into the fur areas. Just letting that move around a bit. And this is a real dark area, so I can just add color right in here. I'm not really worrying about leaving a lot of lines. It's kind of the fun thing about watercolors, just leaving those different parts of how the watercolor behaved on its own. in the stripes. I have to add them in now. So we can count the stripes. There's this first area that has kind of a stripe here. Then I need to split them up between the, on the tail. So there's one, two, three, four, five stripes. So I can, looks like I did it pretty good. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I go ahead and widen those up a little bit. It's a sketch, it doesn't have to be exact. So let's paint those in. And then there's a few stripes on the tail itself. There's the tip, which is really dark. And I wasn't really exact with placement, so I'm just gonna add one right in there. And that's another place where you can kind of note some changes. That I was not exact about the number of stripes on the tail. You can even count them and add, write that in on the side here so you have a good note of that. I'm just adding a little bit more to deepen those in. And I'm going to deepen this color even more. Here, I guess do this while it's wet or wait till it's dry. It doesn't really make a difference. So kind of doing the same thing I did before, and then dabbing off my brush and moving that paint up and then down to soften that edge a little bit and create a bit of a gradient. And you can deepen all this later. I'm just doing it right now. So I'm going to deepen this color up a little bit here as well. And a little bit more into back here. And a little bit more on the face. color and the ears and the nose. You can test this out beforehand. I just kind of went for it because it's a sketch. I'm not too terribly worried about it.
a little bit on the base there. I didn't even draw in the nails. I forgot to draw those in. So that makes it kind of hard to go back here. I can draw them in now so that I can have them for later so I don't make it super dark. So I'm gonna draw each of those nails in. And I even changed the position of the foot. So that makes it a little different too. You can draw right on top of your watercolor paper at any time. Just try not to put your hand in any wet paint because then it might smudge. Just draw those nails. There's claws. And now it'll be a little easier to avoid them when I put in dark, even darker color. So I'll let this dry a little bit. So I could use a little bit more time drying. And I refilled my water brush. Since this is just a sketch, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna work in the drier areas first, so I add paint to the drier areas. And dab it off onto my towel and test it out, make sure it's deep and dark enough. And this is the panda red brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that based on my panda reference I'll start, start just kind of adding that in all these places and this time I'll avoid the nails I'm adding the paint here. It's turned out a little red. It's imperfectly perfect. Just keep adding it in all these dark areas. Spaces. You can think of them as shape as well to make it a little easier. Right. So this color is a little darker on the tail, but we're going to start with the tip of the tail. It's darkest there. I'm going to clean up my brush and kind of let it come into the ring there a little bit. There's these tail rings have a little bit of this darker color in them, looks like. So let's add a little bit. And then it's just a little darker on the side of the face. You can even add some more of that red color there. So we'll go ahead and add a little bit more of that red color. I didn't need to add it to the eyes. And just preserving a little eye white area on the top for the reflection. It's kind of creating a little crescent, so kind of dabbing one side, then dabbing the other. Then to keep putting a little bit more on the face. 
legs here. And back, it's even more. It's a real bright color back. Through here. there will be pretty dark so go ahead and add that in. Some of these pandas have seen from what I saw darker tails and lighter tails or varied throughout so, so there's a lot. This panda's tail is pretty dark. I ended up paint, being more paint than I expected there but I'm gonna add it in anyway. It's real rough, not worrying too much. A little more to the base of the tail. Tail tip, maybe make these a little thicker. Just letting it all kind of flow together a little bit. It's the fun of watercolor. So by leaving this edge a little whiter than I expected, it's giving me kind of that light reflection that the video has, so it's kind of nice. So clean off my brush again. And this is still a bit wet, and I might want to wait. Well, that's not that bad. I guess I can add this other color in. So I'm gonna get this really deep, dark brown color. Tail tip is definitely too wet. You can kind of feel it. I'm going to avoid the tail and I'm going to add in this really deep dark brown color. shining right here so I can kind of add the color in here real deep and dark clean up my brush and then fill that space in a little bit just to kind of do a subtle light reflecting there and I could have done more to keep that from blending together, but I had already made the decision just to let it kind of blend. And then changed my mind last minute there. So that's what it's going to be. I got a little bit too much paint there. Dab my brush and then kind of move it around. blend much so I'm just gonna add it in there just as it is. And just kind of make some lines like little hair lines. It's kind of fluffy. Clean up 
clean off my brush, let this dry, and add some ink lines. Most of this is dry except for right here where I added too much paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And at this time I can correct some of the things I made mistakes with. So like this, I put a little too much paint in there, but that's okay. I can redraw those lines and redefine them. that they're back to where they're supposed to be. And I'm starting with the smallest tip micron because it's most forgiving. I'm saying it's small and thin. It's kind of like we started with the thin lines. Filled in those eyes. And the ears are a little bit bigger too, I noticed. I'm going to let those get a little bit bigger. Kind of get this fluff. That feels a little bit more normal. Feels a little bit better. It's kind of slowly adding in these details. drying in here. Luckily I'm not going to add any ink lines into that. Now I'm going to add some lines here. All these four lines. Next, I'm going to start adding in a few more lines with the slightly thicker micron, the 01 micron. I'm really anxious to start filling in this nose. I'm going to just start lightly on the bottom where it's darkest. And like with our step by step, I'm just going to add some little dots and tap them in there to fill it in a little bit. And fill in between. And 
we're gonna find the face a little. Close the eyes just a little bit more. I kind of like this crescent on top, crescent on the bottom. I need to add some whiskers. So I think about where the starting point is about here and the ending point spots the body. Just kind of add some in. And a few on the chin. Kind of curving around, going different directions. just a little bit there. Hopefully. And then add just a little bit more dark color in that. Get the base. And just, just a little bit of some thicker lines throughout in the dark areas. We don't define any spaces for the difference. So the space kind of blends in with the space a lot some lines in here. I'll define that a little bit. I like that soft line here because it's a soft light hitting it. I'm just going to put this dark line since it's shadow. There's no any light hitting. And line variation is really important to help your image pop. So I'm kind of skipping some areas and lessening into other areas to kind of get them to pop. We're not lighting claws or nails. A little bit. I'm doing the outside of the inside so I preserve that lighter color even though it's not like the right color. And lastly, since we have our white color pencil, I'm going to do some, first of all, we're going to go ahead and add those whiskers biggest tracing over them. And I can also go ahead and add them into the nails. Just a quick trick if you need some white area, quick white areas. And then also here where I forgot to add the definition of light hitting just a couple places and just kind of add that in to mimic that light since we're using it. So, so make sure I put it in the right spot. Start kind of light. Quick trick. A little bit of light hitting the light there as well. And let me get that a little further. Another little detail I want to add before I'm done is this little fuzzy edges. So I'm gonna just add in some fuzzy edges here. Don't forget to add any thoughts or observations in the white areas, anything you thought was off or you really liked about your sketch, uh, any observations you had about the animal, 
any th thoughts about your feelings, your moods, the weather, anything you like, you can add it in here in this white space around the panda itself. Great job, keep practicing. Thank you for joining me. Please share your art on our Facebook banner page and also use the hashtag nature creator to have a feature on the social media. If you have any questions, like to see a plant or animal featured in a future lesson, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you again. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and shop for lesson crates at naturesketchcrete.com.